Hi everyone, my name is Luca Cirio. In this video, I'll speak about quantum chemistry. If I only mention it at school, students ask me, what are you talking about? For that reason, I'll try to be as clear as possible in explaining the argument. Quantum chemistry is a branch of chemistry whose primary focus is the application of quantum mechanics in physical models. Major goals of quantum chemistry are increasing the accuracy of the results for small molecular systems and increasing the size of large molecules that can be processed, which is limited by scaling considerations. In reactions, quantum chemistry studies the ground state of individual atoms and molecules, the excited states, and the transition states that occur during the chemical reactions. On the calculations, quantum chemical studies use also semi-empirical and other methods based on quantum mechanical principles and deal with time-dependent problems. The first step in solving chemical problem is usually solving the Schrödinger equation with the electronic molecular Hamiltonian. This is called determining the electronic structure of the molecule. In quantum mechanics, uh, the Schrodinger equation is a partial differential equation uh, that describes uh, how the quantum state of a physical system changes with time. Now we can see the uh, general uh, Schrodinger equations. But I don't want to complicate the argument, uh, and if someone wishes to deepen the mathematic analysis, he can study the equations. What I want to underline are the consequences of its solutions. First of all, the Schrodinger equation predicts that if certain properties of a system are measured, the result may be quantized, meaning that only specific discrete values can occur. An example is energy quantization. The energy of an electron in an atom is always one of the quantized energy levels. Another example is quantization of angular momentum. The uh, measurements not always give a quantized result in quantum mechanics. For example, uh, position, momentum, time, and uh, in some situation, energy can have uh, any value across a continuous uh, range. This equation can predict the probability distributions that are the results of the measurements of the particles determined properties, but fundamentally cannot predict the exact result of each measurement. Another implication is the effect of the quantum tunneling. Now we can see a rock and a hill. In classical physics, if a rock is rolled slowly up a large hill, it comes to a stop and rolled back. Because it doesn't have enough energy to get over the top of the hill and reach the other side. Similarly, a particle coming from the left doesn't have enough energy to climb the barrier. However, the Schrödinger equation predicts that a particle can tunnel the barrier even if it has too little energy. The non-relativistic Schrödinger equation is a type of partial differential equation called wave equation. Therefore, it is often said that particles can exhibit behavior usually attributed to waves. Two slits diffraction is a famous example of the strange behaviors that waves regularly display that are not intuitively associated with particles. The overlapping waves from the two slits cancel each other out in some location and reinforce each other in other locations, causing a complex pattern to emerge. Intuitively, one would not expect this pattern from firing a single particle at the slits, because the particle should pass through one slit or the other, not a complex overlap of both. However, since the Schrodinger equation is a wave equation, a single particle fired through a double slit does show the same pattern. This is 
for instance, a double slit experiment showing the accumulation of electrons on a screen as time passes. The Schrödinger equation provides a way to calculate the wave function of a system and how it changes dynamically in time. However, it does not directly say what exactly the wave function is. Interpretation of quantum mechanics address questions such as what the relation is between the wave function, the underlying reality, and the results of experimental measurements. An important aspect is the relationship between the Schrödinger equation and wave function collapse. In the oldest Copenhagen interpretation, particles follow the Schrödinger equation except during the wave function collapse, during which they behave entirely differently. The advent of quantum decoherence theory allowed alternative approaches wherein the Schrödinger equation is always satisfied and wave function collapse should be explained as a consequence of the Schrödinger equation.